Good morning, this is Dr. Jingbo Luis Liu <coughs> from Texas A&M University, Kingsville. Today we are going to start chapter 10, Conjugation in LK Science and the Ilolic System. In this chapter, we are going to show you the nomenclatures, the resonance structures in your allolic system, and the corresponding chemical reactions. The first topic will be about the conjugation in alkyl dienes and the allolic system. A double bond can act as a substituent and give other groups special properties and reactivities. For example, carbocations, radicals, and ions, negatively charged ions, connected to alkenes are called allolic carbocation, allolic radical, and allolic anions. So if you see these different groups, those groups, allolic systems, they are going to have very special properties and very special reactivities. Your alkenes which can be connected to a single bond. This alkene, so it's called conjugated dienes. If the alkenes compose more than one carbon-carbon bonds. So if you go back to this carbocation, so the first one is a positively charged carbon, which connected to your alkene. So alkene, connected to a single bond. This group, you call it allolic groups. Positively charged ions, you call it allolic carbocation. Similarly, if you have a radical, this group you call it allolic free radical. The very last one, you have negatively charged ion, so this one is called allolic anion. The conjugated dienes is considered as this last example. You have a carbon double bonds connected to carbon single bond and then carbon, carbon, carbon double bonds. In other words, your carbon single, double, single, double bonds alternatively occurring. So you call them conjugated dienes. The allolic groups so can be used for your nomenclature. So this ILO is both a common name and also a permissible IUPAC name for the ILO groups, such as this compound. If you have the sp3 carbon, which existing in your allolic group, such as the sp3 hybridized carbon, of in your allo carbon. This carbon is called allolic carbon. For example, in this allo alcohol, this carbon is a, a sp3 hybridized carbon. This carbon is called allolic carbon. This molecule particularly called allo alcohol. Similarly, if you have a chloride-based compound, this one called allo chloride and you have iloamines. So similarly, uh, they have different types of uh, systematic nomenclature. And then we're moving on to the resonance forms and the delocalizations in your ilocation. Resonance forms and the delocalization in your iloradicals, also in your iloions. So what we found, each of the following ILO groups are resonance stabilized. Those ILO groups also can be charged positively or negatively, also can have unpaired electrons. So those un these ILO groups so are also shared between two and carbons. What I intend to say, the ilo cation, the ilo radical, and the ilo anions, they can have different resonance structures. 
such as these two different structures. And also, the positively charged ions can be expressed by this hybrid resonance, meaning this positively charged ion, the charge, can be shared by this one end and the second end carbons with your central carbon. These three carbons, they are going to share your positively charged. In between, this double bond is going to be used dashed line to represent delocalization of your electrons, further stabilize your ILO group. Similarly, for your ILO radicals, <clears throat> you should also find the two resonance structures so which they can inter uh, converting from one to another, but the hybrid resonance is more re accurately reflecting your structure. So again, you have your single electron, which are not paired, and then you use dashed line to represent this double bond, which can be shared by three carbons. The last one is your ILO and ion. Also, this negatively charged can be also changed from the last carbon to the very left carbon. Double bond can be also shifted. So these two are called the resonance structure. The very last one is your hybrid resonance. Similarly, you have negative charge. I just want to inform everybody or remind everybody, don't forget your positive charge, single radical negative charge. And also the dashed line represents the localization of your electrons. So solid line represents a bond dashed line represented the delocalized electrons. And about the diens, so we can consider them or classify the diens into different groups. Diene meaning you have your alkene. Inside this alkene, you have two carbon-carbon double bonds. So you can classify the diens into conjugated diens, isolated diens, and cumulated diens. Your conjugated diens is showed as this first example is called the E13 pentadiene. This is a conjugated one. Conjugated in which the two alkenes are joined by a carbon carbon single bond. So if you take a look, there's a two alkene, two carbon double bonds shared by a single bond. In other words, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond alternatively occurring. Another type of diens you can consider it called isolated diens. In this isolated diene, you are going to see at least one sp3 carbon is going to separate two carbon carbon double bond so in this second formula so it's called one four pentadiene in this one four pentadiene you found this carbon which is taking sp3 hybridization meaning you are going to have a carbon double bond followed by a single bond and another single bond, and then double bond. So again, this is called isolated diets. The very last one, we call it cumulated diets. Cumulated diets indicate two alkenes share a double bonded carbon. For example, in this one, two pentadiene, this carbon, is shared by these two double bonds. So you have three types of dienes. The first one called the conjugated diene. Second one called the isolated diene. The last one called the cumulated diene. In your conjugated diene, you are going to see two alkenes joined by a carbon carbon single bond. In your isolated diene, 
you are going to observe at least one sp3 carbon between the two alkenes in your accumulated diets you can find one carbon is shared by two alkenes the carbon so double bonded for both carbons that's a three different diets so followed by how do we name the diets the nomenclature of diets is essentially following the same rule as your parent LK. You simply change your LK, change that NE to diene, change your LK to A diene, and then you add in the locants for the different carbon double bonds. So L, L, we call it alkyl diene. Those alkyl dienes are named by replacing the A and E ending, replace it with the A diene and adding the locant for each alkene. For example, this first molecule. So we are going to find the longest carbon carbon chain. So I have one, two, three, four, five, totally five carbons. And then you call it a pentane. You change A and E to A diene, will be penta diene. And this one, you have two carbon double bonds, you call the one, three dash penta diene. Oh, I must apologize over here, should be one, comma, three dash penta diene. This formula is a trans molecule. You can use the E configuration to name it, or trans 13-pentadiene. Similarly, for this isolated diene, you have seven different carbons. Therefore, you call it hypotene. You change it to heptadienes, and then you indicate the locants for the double carbon bonds in 16-heptadiene. Similarly, if you have a cyclic dienes, you are going to name it the same way as your regular dienes. So you have six carbons, you have cyclic compounds, you call it cyclohexadiene. You have one, four represent the carbon double bonds. So this last molecule is named as one, four cyclohexadiene. That's essentially about the nomenclature of the diets. About diets preparation, we can trace back to 19, uh, maybe, maybe further, further earlier. So what we want to show you is one of the dehydrogenation reaction. In order to prepare diets, you may consider how you are going to convert LK to LK. So the first one you call the dehydrogenation reaction. If you remove hydrogens, you may also consider alcohol-based compounds. You remove water. So therefore you have your dehydration reaction. If you have halides, you want to remove HCl or HBr, hydrogen halides. You can use dehydrohalogenation. So they have three different elimination reactions. You also can, can work on the dehydrogenation. If you have dihydrides, so you can go through the, di, uh, the, the di, double dihydro, uh, sorry, it just uh, you remove two uh, highlights. You call the dehydrogenation. To summarize the preparations of dienes, you can work on these four different eliminations. Number one, dehydrogenation. Number two, dehydration. Number three, dehydrohalogenation. Number four, dehydrogenation. We showed you three examples in this slide. First one is called the thermal dehydrogenation. This reaction normally is an industry process. You do need a very high temperature under a special catalyst such as chromia and alumina. So you are going to convert this uh, pentane 
into a one two panta diets and you release two moles of hydrogen gas so this is a high temperature requirement you call it thermal dehydrogenation and then in the lab we can use uh, this uh, alcohol based compounds for example you have three methyl five hexane three O. you are going to apply catalyst heat it up you are going to produce a four methyl one three hexa diene six different carbons you also produce the hexa diene uh, uh, produce a diene similarly if you have highlights you have four bromo three methyl one hexane you can remove hydrogen highlights HCl so you form another double bond so you produce four methyl one three hexadiene this uh, dehydrohalogenation requires basic solution you also heat it up research indicated both dehydration and dehydrohalogenation can produce dienes with a very high product yield so again this is a different preparations of your dienes diene can form polymers there are some commonly used polymer also involve the natural existing polymer such as your rubber rubber is a natural polymer made from isopropene we use the rubber a lot the rubber has a monomer which is called isopropene also named as three uh, sorry named as two methyl one three beta diene you have four carbon carbon chain you have one methyl group this is a nomenclature based on your iupac rules the other one is a common name called isopropene so commonly used the rubber which gave you a z configuration of your alkene alkenes so you this uh, isopropene is your monomer repeating this monomer you produce a polymer so this polymer is commonly known as the rubber the second very important polymer so which used as the uh, insulated undersea communication cables which is called gutta percha gutta percha has an e configuration an e configuration uh, of alkene so these two molecules are related to the dienes if you have dienes what kind of reaction this dying can go through you also can consider the addition reaction of your alkenes so you can go through hydrogenation hydrogenation hydration and halogenation so you can have this reaction can you also have that oxidation reaction i personally believe yes in this case we are going to show you uh, addition of your HX hydrogen highlights hydrogen highlights to the conjugated dienes so I also want to mention for this addition reaction you also need to follow Markov Nikov's rule if you have the regular reaction condition if you apply boron hydration oxidation or peroxides you may consider anti Markov Nikov's rule in this chapter in this example we only showed you the Markov Nikov's product for example I have a 1 3 cyclopentadiene reacted with one mole of hydrogen chloride you are going to produce a 3 chloropentadiene again so one of the carbon double bonds will be involved in reaction so this reaction followed Markov Nikov's rule in this case because these two carbons they are equivalent so it's not really necessary for you to distinguish in this compound I want to also point it out this part is a conjugated diene this second part this is a, if you take a look of the bottom part that's isolated diene depends on which way you consider it so this is the addition of your hydrogen highlights to your alkene is a very important uh, characteristic reaction of your dienes of your alkenes and also the 
halogenation reaction can have uh, different types of uh, addition. You can add in halogens. You call the halogenation addition to the dienes. If you have this one, uh, this one, uh, one three beta diene reacted with this bromine, so under this uh, uh, trichloro methane, so you are going to produce a one four addition product. This product was found to be a trans configuration or E configuration. So there, there this following showed you the chemical reaction. So if you have this uh, beta diene, so you react it with a uh, bromine. So theoretically, this first one, two carbon will be reacted to produce a three, four dibromo, one butene, theoretically. However, in the real product, what we found is one, four addition dominates with the E product, with a trans product. Mm -hmm. So that's essentially our product. My question for everybody, so why this one, four product is dominating? So you may go back to your chapter six or chapter five to review, to thinking over about the magnesium of your halogenation of your alkene. So what's going to happen? Thinking about that a back attachment. So this will give you a better understanding. And also thinking about the radical formation. If you form a radical, primary, secondary, tertiary, which one is more stable? In that case, you may consider the radical shaped, meso shaped, hydrogen shaped, etc. etc. So this is your take-home message. Again, the take-home message is why this one four addition is preferable. So followed by we show you a special reaction. It's called the Dears other reaction. The Dears other reaction is critical because this reaction is going to occur without catalyst and produce a cyclic compounds. This cyclic compounds go through some important transition state. So let's see, the Dears other reaction is a cyclic addition reaction. In this reaction, you must have a diene, such as this one, uh, one three penta diene. You must have a diene, and you must have a dienophily, such as you must have another carbon double bond, like this alkene. You must have a diene and an alkene. This alkene is called a diene file. This reaction is going to go through a pericyclic reaction. This reaction, sh sh this procedure, transition state, is called a cyclic transition state. You are going to produce a Dears Ard adduct. This reaction, again, does not require catalyst. So five key points about the Dears Ard reaction needs our student to know it. If in your <coughs> Dears Ard reaction, you have this uh, diene file. So you are going to introduce some groups. This group is called electron drawing groups. They are withdrawing electrons. The electron withdrawing groups on your alkene will enhance the reaction rate. For example, your carbonyl groups, CO double bonds, these carbonyl groups are very important electron withdrawing group. So this group addition will enhance this Dears the reaction. When you're looking at the chemical reaction, what you are going to look at, number one, you are going to look at this diene. Find the number of the carbons. One, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four. Four carbons. So four, one, two, three, four. Four carbons from your diene. And then find another one called Dienophil, dienophilic. So find the alkene. So you have this carbon carbon double. Find the carbon carbon double bond, not the carbon oxygen double bond. This carbon carbon double bond 
will be involved in reaction. This part is from your carbon-carbon double bond. So what happened is this diene, once rebutidiene, reacted mm -hmm. with the carbon-carbon double bond from your molecule is called aerolene. These two reacted. So what happened, this double bonded carbon bond, one of the double bond, pi bond, they start weakening, start forming bond with another carbon from the other compound. Similarly, this pi bond is start weakening to form bonds. You go through a transition state. That transition state called the cyclic transition state. So that's what I'm saying. The diene carbon double bond start weakening. And then this single bond start forming double bond. Double bond start weakening, and meaning one electron transfer to this single bonded carbon. One electron from your carbon double bond transfer to single bond. And then you start forming a ring structure. So you produce a product which resulted from your Diels the reaction. This product is very high yield, 100% based on the research that uh, indicating. And this reaction needs benzene as your solvent. You do need to heat it up to 100 Celsius. You are going to produce cyclohexene, full carboxyhexadehydride. Uh, uh, so this is your molecules. That's what we are going to use. Other groups like with electron withdrawing groups, so also make your dienophily very reactive, such as if you have a, these are called the formerate compounds. This part make your carbon bond very reactive. Another one is called malic anhydride. This carbon double bond also very reactive. Similarly, if you have this tetracyano isoline, this double bond again also very reactive. For example. If I have product, I want to produce a cyclohexene-based product. So how do you do this? So usually you can find this butadiene, four carbons, and you are going to use this malic anhydride. This double bond will be involved in reaction. It turns out this product is very high yield. So you form a cyclohexene-based compounds. The other part of your molecule, if you see this uh, uh, dienophile, the other part is retained by itself. This again, this Diels the reaction is more reactive. So this dienes and your alkene is usually going to produce a cyclohexene based substance. So which meaning you are going to always find at least one ring than one more ring than your compounds, uh, than your reactants. In this case, this anhydride, you have one three-numbered cyclic compounds. So you produce another one, which is hexacyclic, cyclo, sorry, cyclohexene. You produce one more ring compared with your original reactant. Up to this point, I'm going to stop, and then we are going to come back to study your chapter 11, arenes and the aromaticity. So we gave a five minutes break, and then we start your chapter 11, arenes and the aromaticity. Thank you so much. Stay safe and stay healthy.